Welcome back to another edition of Front Office Rocks Learning, Practice by Numbers. Uh, this video is actually going to be an educational tool for myself. Um, so I'm Laura with Front Office Rocks, and I'm here with Rohit from Practice okay. by Numbers. And if you're watching this, you're probably a client or thinking of being a client or interested in what I'm interested with Practice by Numbers, which is we're not only looking at numbers in the biz, in the practice about how we're doing in the practice, but we're also looking at overhead and business numbers and practice by numbers brings them both into one software. So I have not done this yet in my office. So Rohit is going to teach me what I need to do to get my QuickBooks linked with practice by numbers. So now we can start looking at uh, you know the top numbers and the bottom numbers and comparing them. So Rohit, do you want to, Get us started on how, how I get started to get my QuickBooks connected with Practice by Numbers. Absolutely. Well, uh, welcome back, everyone, to another video with uh, our great partner, Front Office Rocks. Um, in this video, we'll, uh, as Laura said, we'll talk about how to set up QuickBooks pretty quickly. And the simplest way to do that is and you can, this is all self service, so you can go in and do it yourself as the time permits. If you own your own account in QuickBooks, it's pretty straightforward. All you do is Go into the settings. I'm going to go into the settings for this, this practice right here. And in this particular case, connect to QuickBooks is highlighted here. And that means this practice has not set up their QuickBooks connection with practice by numbers. When you click on this button, it will take you to the Intuit site. If you have your own credentials, great. If you don't have your own credentials, go into your CPA's office or your bookkeeper's office and have them do it. So just so you guys know, Intuit is what he's saying, and that's who owns QuickBooks. So if you're not the one doing this at this point, you have a bookkeeper or an accountant, you're going to want to work with them to get it connected or at least get the passwords. I mean, you should have the passwords, but this is why we're teaching you this in, in uh, Practice by Numbers to be more proactive. So just talk to the person who does this for you. Right. And once you click on that, it'll take you to that Intuit site or QuickBooks site, and you'll enter your username and password or your bookkeeper's username and password. And if you have multiple companies, it'll give you the list of all of the companies you have. Let's say you have multiple practices, or for example, if uh, my wife goes in and she sees her different practices in there, so it'll ask you which company are you connecting with. So if your bookkeeper has like 20 companies that they work with, they don't have to worry about that they're giving access to all of the companies to you. No, you choose the one company that's gonna sync with this one practice. So it's only one-to-one -one connection, okay? Let me ask you a question, because um, I don't have multiple locations, but for people who do, how does this work with Practice by Numbers and QuickBooks? Do they have separate, are they separate offices in here, logging in separately, and they would have two different QuickBooks accounts, or how does it work? So it depends on the legal structure. So if the companies are set up as different LLCs, or okay. different legal entities, they should all have separate QuickBooks accounts because okay. they are, they're different. Uh, each of them have their own EIN and they're just all completely separate entities. They will have separate QuickBooks accounts or co companies. But now there are some companies that are not quite different LLCs. So they are this, this main LLC and all of the other companies report into them, maybe in a, in a, in a LLC structure or maybe in a single company structure. In that case, what people do is they track all their expenses in QuickBooks using classes. And okay. if, you, if, you, if you're a bookkeeper, you will clearly know what this is. And in that case, you can split out. Let's say you have a company, uh, let's say you have ABC Dental, and they have six company or six locations, and they would have six different classes. So when they make an expense, they would make an expense for ABC location New York, then ABC location uh, New okay. Jersey, and, and so that way you can separate it out. So any dentist setting this up, get, get with your bookkeeper if you've got the different locations. So I don't want to go off on a rabbit trail here. So, okay, yes. so now we get it connected. Now what? Once you get it connected, it'll ask you to authorize it once, and then that's it, then the connection is made. Once the connection is made, the data will start flowing. It'll take about five to 10 minutes for the first time for the connection to actually completely establish because the first sync is the most involved sync, okay? After about five to 10 minutes, when you go into the practice, what it will look like is something like this. It'll say QuickBooks connected. It'll show the name of your company when it says connected. Okay. From this point onwards, your connection is live. It will update every night 
as your bookkeeper is making changes, as your CPA is making changes, or as you are making changes, it'll update, it'll sync every night. And what you have to do is for it to be useful, you have to do an account mapping. And I'm gonna show you in this video how to do that account mapping. So you don't have to use our chart of accounts like many other software do. You can just use your own chart of accounts and map them into a standard chart of accounts that practice by numbers use. Okay, so for those who don't understand chart of accounts and mapping and all that kind of stuff, chart of accounts is what your accountant uses to put your expenses into a category. So, so some of the chart of the accounts is set up for tax purposes and they need to be tracked that way for taxes. What Rohit is saying is we can actually use practice by numbers to map certain expenses to things that make sense for us. Because as a business owner, I don't really care what IRS thinks is important or not important for taxes. I care about how much are we spending on XYZ thing. So what he's saying is you don't have to know the chart of accounts. Just understand that however your accountant or bookkeeper is doing it in QuickBooks, we can and make it our own in practice by number. So it's something you actually use versus what you get from your bookkeeper or accountant and we don't actually hardly ever look at. So that's what he's talking about. Right. Right, so very well put, Laura. Um, I'm so, being the intermediary. I know this much about you know business and, and finances. So no, that's that's great. Now here here you have an engineer talking about business and finances. So I I, all, I lose people uh, within a few sentences. So that's great, and I appreciate you clarifying that. Uh, so let's uh, once you get connected, and this screen will change to as I said, it'll stay connected, and. What you want to do is you want to ignore the vendors category right now. We don't do anything with that. We, this is, we are preparing for the future as well, where we bring the vendors and all that stuff. Don't worry about that right now. Just go into the accounts category. These are the chart of accounts. And this is where we need your help to map this for the very first time. You may do it yourself, or you may ask your bookkeeper to do it for you. And either way it works. So here are the key things that you have to map. You don't have to map every single chart of account. Many QuickBooks accounts will have hundreds of chart of accounts and you don't have to map all of them. And let me tell you, what are the things that you have to map? One important aspect is map your bank accounts. Okay. Tell us which ones are your bank accounts and mark them as cash because this will help us understand how much cash you have in the practice so that we can do, we can, we can do, we can do a little bit of an analysis to see how long will it take or if you stop collecting money today, so you go out of business. And of course, that's not the intent over here, but it tells us how much cash is there in, in the practice. So on this page, the most important thing for you to map is just map your bank account, the cash. The other things you can map is accumulated depreciation and all, but it's, it's not really needed at this point. Okay. So remember, on assets, mark your banks. On Equity, we don't care about it right now. It's, it's there and you brought it here, don't worry about it. Uh, let's go into revenue because before we go into the expenses because the revenue is the next important thing. Mark every single source that is an income source. Now, if you don't mark it, we will just assume every revenue account is an income source anyway. So if you care about marking it, put everything as income, but Remember, this is one category that you have to clearly highlight, which is the refunds, because we want to track that, how much money is going back to the patients or insurance companies, all that. If you have a separate category for marking refunds, mark that. Everything else on this page is not that important because we will consider all of this thing as income anyway. Okay. okay. The biggest mapping exercise happens under the expense category because this is what we want to track. On the left side, you will see all of your expenses or all of your chart of accounts. Okay? These are every single chart of account that your CPA or you have created yourself. I'll tell you what type of account type was us. So the first two are coming from your QuickBooks directly. And the, and the map type and the expense type is our construct. So we decide on these are the categories for us and you have to map it. For the most part, what we are interested in figuring out is what are your facility costs, right? How much? So if I look at my overall expense categories, I'm looking to split everything up in 
five main categories or six, we'll see if I is number five or six, advertising, okay? You want, you can split it out as individual advertising categories, but you don't have to. You can plop all of them into just advertising and promotion. The next thing we're trying to look at is your overall business expenses outside of the major category. So I'll come back to the business expenses in a second. Let's go further down this discretionary. Let's go further down facility. Now facility expenses are important because this is where all your rent comes in or your, all your repairs and maintenance, all your utility costs. What we're trying to figure out is what does it cost for you to run your physical facility? That's where all the utilities and the rent and everything goes in. Another category very important for us is lab expenses, because this is something we want to track as well, which is how much are the lab expenses going on in this office. Next category, payroll. This is the biggest expense that every practice is going to have. Now, there are quite a few, so there are quite a few categories in here. If you have the patients, map it into individual categories. If you don't have the patients, just plop everything down into the payroll expense. I would encourage you to categorize it. But even if you don't, you can put everything down in the expense category, in, in just the high level payroll expense category. And so I'm gonna to add to this real quick. So this is important to us in our practice because we wanna keep a track of expenses and associates and all of that. So Rohit told me this and we actually went back and had our bookkeeper change the way she was entering it in QuickBooks um, by person by department so that we can keep better track of it here. So you may have to have a conversation with your bookkeeper to change some of the ways that they're entering things because if they're lumping it all into one big payroll, you're not going to be able to categorize it the way you want. So just understand that if you can't get out of here what you want, you may want to show this video to your bookkeeper and there's um, Rohit has information from you for you to show them what they need to do. Right, there's another video and, and what Laura mentions is if you don't use QuickBooks payroll to do your payroll and you use your third party system, normally they would just make one bulk entry per payroll. And that, there's no way to split it out to see how much did you pay to your hygienist versus your assistant versus your front desk. And they have to do just a little bit extra work to make sure that information is not lost. That information comes back into, into the QuickBooks system. And that's, there's a simple way of doing it rather than having to only use QuickBooks payroll. You can still use a third party payroll like, like you do, Laura. Uh, All right, not to cut you short, but you got a minute or two left if we want to try to stay in our uh, short time frames. All right, so I'll, I'll hurry up. So payroll expenses, the next one is supplies. And till all of this is all included in your overall business expenses. What's not included in your business, in your overall office expense or business expense is the owner expenses. So any income that's going to the owner, okay, any depreciation, any other expenses should always get mapped into the owner expenses. And what this means is this will, when we count, when we calculate the office overhead, we will not include owner expenses as part of the office overhead. And the last thing that you have to map is what kind of an expense it is. Is it a fixed expense or a variable expense? This is what will drive your fixed overhead, overhead and your variable overhead. Again, if you don't care about differentiating those, you can leave everything as fixed, but I would highly encourage to categorize you each category. You know if it's a variable extent. All the payroll is variable. Every single amount of payroll is variable. But medical, uh, let's say medical insurance is not because no matter if you work 10 hours more, 10 hours less, you're gonna have to pay that medical uh, insurance premiums. So you know which is variable and which is not. And so market so that at the end of the month, at the end of each quarter, you know if your fixed expenses are going up or your variable expenses are going up. If you don't categorize it, you can't quite tell, my overhead just went up, which part of my overhead went up, okay? Right. So we'll stop here. And uh, Laura, do you have any questions? Uh, no, it's totally, I actually haven't done this yet. So I just wrote myself a note. Look, Matt, practice by numbers. So that's what I'm gonna do when we're done. Uh, my, my two things I just wanna mention is um, that you can't fix what's going on in your practice if you don't know where you are. So taking the time to figure out what your overhead is, taking the time to see where your overhead's high is going to be the best way for you to see, you know, where can I fix what's going on in the practice. And the second thing is, is if you haven't already done this, make sure you know who has access to what in practice by numbers. Because I know I don't want my staff seeing this. This is just for the owners to see. So make sure that you've gotten the right 
um, access to different parts of practice by numbers, which is a whole different video. So, no, I think this is amazing. And I'm actually excited. My, my husband always says he's the dentist. We're always spending too much money. So now I can put it into a map and I can start to look at it, which will be another video you're going to help us work on next. So I, that was super easy and I've got my homework set. So thank you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you in the next video.